You're listening to The Long Game Podcast. I'm your host, Sandra Scaiano. I was on a trip recently with some girlfriends, and the topic of QR codes came up. How do you make them? What can you use them for? One friend had a business card with her QR code on it. And, you know, I hadn't been using them for my clients except for at in-person events. And so the conversation among us really piqued my interest. And I promised them that I was going to dive in and circle back with answers. Well, girls, this episode is for you as well as anyone else who's curious about QR codes. All right, like people are so much more aware now of what QR codes are and how to use them since we have all experienced the pandemic. You know, when the whole restaurant industry went touchless and rid themselves of their physical menus, they created QR codes so that uh, their customers could view menus and to facilitate digital ordering. You know, it's tipping points of use like this that have forced a nation to become familiar with this technology and how to use it. And this really normalized what some has said was a dead end tech industry a mere two years ago. And now we have a Super Bowl ad, a 60 second Super Bowl ad valued at $7 million that was only a QR code bouncing around the screen. And not only was the Coinbase ad, which is a Bitcoin company, very curious, it was also very effective. You know, according to reporting by CNN Business, Coinbase had more than 20 million hits on its landing page in one minute. And I mean, it actually crashed the app for about an hour. So uh, when we talk about mainstream culture, You know, to me, the Super Bowl is the pinnacle of it. So for this investment to be made and this outcome to be had, it is safe to say that mainstream users know what to do when they see a QR code now. And, you know, QR codes are even at the supermarket. My local shop, right, uses QR codes to give additional discounts on products. And, you know, there are They've got tags on the shelves with QR codes that you can scan and you can get coupons for additional discounts on certain products. And when you scan the code, it brings you to an app that you need to have an account for so that you can put the coupon into your account. So with that, the grocery store is collecting data on you, right? You're signed up for their list. They're also able to track you, what products you use, what's your history, all of that kind of stuff. It's very interesting. So, you know, we've got this Super Bowl mega example, the restaurant example, and the grocery store example. But how does the mainstreaming of QR codes translate to us as small and digital business owners? Today, the long game is QR codes. You're listening to The Long Game Podcast with Sandra Scaiano. In a world where everyone is doing, it's easy to get lost in a sea of comparison, secret tricks, and promises of overnight success. The long game is my approach to business, the actual day in and day out philosophy that you have to show up, you have to do the work, and there's no quick fixes for long-term success. I'm a web designer, digital strategist, and energetic thinker, and I'm here to share the process and lessons I experience with my clients daily who are going through the same struggles of building a business as you are. We'll hear from successful entrepreneurs sharing their long game strategies, and I'm fun, so we're going to have a little fun along the way too. Thanks for being here. Let's get to today's episode. QR codes, those little black and white maze-like graphic squares that we see all about. Let's start with the basics, okay? What exactly are QR codes? So the QR in QR code is short for quick response. And it's a square shaped black and white symbol that you scan with your uh, camera phone, your phone's camera, to learn more about a product or service. And these encrypted squares, they can hold content such as links and coupons and event details and, you know, other information that you want your users to see. And not all of these QR codes need to be square. They can take on different shapes, different colors, and even use logos. So there are some ways that you can start to customize them. To create a QR code, you use a QR code generator, and there are many out there. 
and I'm going to mention some by name later. Um, they're really easy to use and they range in the information that you can enter. Basically, you open up the generator dashboard, enter the information that you want, and click generate code. Like That's it. Super easy. So when you start getting into QR codes, you need to know that there are two types of codes, static and dynamic. Static codes are just that. They stay the same once you enter your information. You know, you cannot go and edit them once the code has been created and they do not allow for tracking. If you want to track these, you'll have to track your URL through Google Analytics. And generally free QR code generators, they create this static type of QR code. Then there are dynamic codes, which allow for flexibility. And these are really the ones that you want to be using for your business. They are created mostly with, um, mainly with paid QR code generators. And it's really worth the expense for the ability to edit and to update your QR codes. I mean, you know, how many times do we make typos, right? And also so that you can track your campaign metrics. So, you know, an, a, another piece that's important to keep in mind through your QR code usage is that these are a mobile application. And since you use your mobile camera to scan the code, pages and content, they are opening on a mobile device. So you want to optimize your QR code content, the destination for mobile devices. And that's really the basic gist of what they are. So let's hop into how and where we can use them. So it is a no brainer to use QR codes if you are a local or brick and mortar business, like pop them around the store to give more info on your products that you offer, have them at checkout or on the receipt for people to leave you a review. And since you can customize the content of your code, you know, you can really direct people where you want them to leave that review. You know, do you want, you can send them to Google My Business to leave a Google review, to your Facebook page to leave a review on, on Facebook. And, you know, people don't have to figure out where should they be leaving a review when you just say, hey, leave me a review. You are now directing them exactly where you want that. And, you know, this type of thoughtfulness to the user experience, it really increases the likelihood that someone will actually leave a review. You are making it easy for them. So QR codes also really work for out-of-home advertising. You know, you'll see them on buses and billboards and buildings. I scanned a QR code uh, recently on a city mural. And, you know, then I learned about the collective that was bringing artwork to the streets. So that was pretty cool, right? You know, just different ways to use them. And these out-of-home opportunities, you know, they are generally geared toward larger brands that have budgets to spend. But, you know, that doesn't mean there is an opportunity for us as digital business owners. As always, finding the opportunities requires us to be creative and to interpret the medium for ourselves. All right, now that live events are being held again, there are so many possibilities with QR codes. I'm starting out number one for networking and connection. You know, create a QR code with your contact info and all of the people that you meet, all they need to do is scan your code to get your info. And another cool option is to have your QR code set to your favorite social media platform so that when people scan your code, they can follow you straight away. So, you know, have it set to your Instagram page and think about it. You really eliminate all those extra clicks and distractions by sending them directly to your social profile page. And really, if they're doing it right in front of you, you can be like, oh, follow me. Make sure you hit that button, right? You can make sure they do it too. Um, okay, number two. So you can use QR codes to send people to an opt-in page to get a PDF, or you can share your presentation materials through a QR code. You know, this is if you're at a live event. And this is something that my friend Barbara White does with her business, 180Biz. At conferences where they run trainings, they use QR codes for their lead magnets. When they share their code, it takes users to a form so they get on the list, and then they can immediately access the download during the class. And this is really getting targeted leads right into their funnel. 
and Barbara so lovingly shared her wisdom with me to share with you that one thing to watch out for when using codes at conferences and live events is that sometimes cell phone service at these events, if you're in a, a convention center thing type of space, it can be spotty. So be prepared with a plan B to distribute your materials. All right, a third way to use it. Brenda also incorporates her QR code into her Zoom background. You know, this way her code, which is leading to her opt-in, is highly visible during virtual trainings that she's hosting and meetings and all these different ways that she's on with a Zoom call. Really, it's a mic drop, mic drop. I saw her QR code when we were on a Zoom call together and it just caught my attention and I had to ask her about it. All right, number four, you can add QR codes to the YouTube videos that you create as an added layer for people who are watching on desktop or even those who watch on a TV, right? You know, pop a code in the corner as a graphic as you would and like deliver content upgrades or your opt-ins, things like that. You know, and I want to mention that since you need your phone's camera to scan a QR code, you know, you want to make sure that your code placement isn't somewhere people will be consuming on mobile, such as social posts and social ads and even like text messages, right? You know, you really cut out so much of your potential audience if you use them here. And that's why for like YouTube videos, I mentioned that it's really just an added layer because people consume YouTube videos in multiple ways, you know, and certain QR code apps, they even have templates where you can drop your customized code right into a template. And then, you know, you're able to use that for your video. Okay. Another piece is to think about the experience you want to create with your codes. You know, build a customized landing page where users will land post scan. You know, you don't want to just be sending people to your homepage and have them try to figure out where to click. You know, they are a captive audience when they are scanning and you've got their attention. So keep that by creating an experience for them. You know, make it mobile optimized and take them directly to the content or the discount code or whatever it is that they can use. And, you know, you can also really add to the landing page that you're sending them to, you can put a video there. Um, You know, there's a lot of QR codes that go to landing pages or to um, that have instructional videos and things like that. Um, You know, you can put your lead magnet, you can talk about your lead magnet, or even just do a welcome video. So really make it an experience for them. What is so great about QR codes? is that they are instant. They are really fast. So when someone scans your code, the page automatically opens up, whether it's your restaurant menu or your PDF opt-in, you know, or even your social media, right? It just pops right up. You don't have to wait and they don't have to type, which really then increases the opportunity that there's like an error in a typo in spelling, all of that. You know, it's really a huge asset. All right, a few more super fun ideas with how to use QR codes. Okay, super cool idea. Create a Spotify playlist and link it in your QR code. You know, then you can put the code with the playlist in different places, right? Who doesn't love a mixtape? I know someone who put the code inside their holiday card, their printed holiday card, so everyone could scan and get a holiday playlist from them. So, you know, you can also put this code on any page of your website for people to open up right to the Spotify playlist. Super fun. All right. You can use QR codes to promote your podcast or to share a private podcast feed with the code. Apps like Hello Audio allow for you to create podcast feeds and they have a landing page with all the links to the major listening platforms. Each Hello audio landing page also has a QR code for those people, like if you share that in an email and they open it on desktop, you know, so that you can open the podcast feed on your phone, which, you know, that is so good. Like I listen to a lot of podcasts and I only listen on my phone, not desktop. And 
course creators, they are getting really creative with this as well. And they are putting bonus content or even their replays of the Q&A calls in private podcast feeds that are accessible only to their members. And, you know, with Kajabi, you can now create private podcasts on the platform. And when you do, you get a custom URL where you can um, direct them to listen on iTunes, let's say. And you can create a QR code for that with that custom link. So this is really allowing you to facilitate listening to your private audio feed wherever you choose it to be. Super cool, right? All right, a few more ways. One of my vendors, we were just talking about this, includes a QR code on their invoice. And it is a PayPal formatted QR code. And it even has little instructional text that says, scan, pay, go. It's pretty brilliant if you want your clients to pay via PayPal and really make it easy for them to pay. All right, and I'm going to put a link to this. Check out these brilliant people that I've discovered. Um, I'm putting their link in the show notes for you. And they have outfitted their RV with QR codes. So at every stop on their road trip travels, when they roll into a new RV park, they scan the codes located in strategic spots on the outside of their RV so that they get set up and breakdown instructions how to hook up water, how to hook up electricity, you know, just so brilliant. And, you know, although this one isn't for business per se, you know, it's really seeing how people are using QR codes, you know, and opening you up to the possibilities. Like when I read, when I saw that video, I was like, I got to start QR coding the laundry process at my house so that my children can start doing the laundry, right? Like this is going to open a whole new door of independence for them and less work for me when my kids can go up and scan the um, washing machine and get the directions like, boom, amazing. Okay. So with so many ideas out there, let's get to generating the code. Okay, there are many types of QR code generators, and they range from free to paid apps. And there are a lot of features that are built in to um, existing platforms as well. So things like Shopify and Jotform, you know, they are softwares that have the ability to create Q QR codes in them. You know, in Shopify, you don't even have to use a, have a store to use their free QR code tool. But if you're just getting started, you can use a free code generator like QR Code Monkey or, you know, sign up with a company like qrcodegenerator.com or Flowcode. And both of these are paid apps and they're approximately $10 a month, but they really provide a number of features that enhance the ease of this use and also the experience for your audience. Most generators, they give you the option of choosing, you know, the type of content that you're going to want to uh, link to, a URL, an email, and text, and, and all, you know, different options. And of course, the paid generators have more of those options. The free ones are really kind of basic looking. They do not even put a lot into the design of the dashboard. It just opens up pretty basic. So I really want you guys to think about your plan of action before you settle on your tech. You know, what are you going to be using QR codes for in your business? Are you using it as a business card? Then a free static option is going to work for you. You know, if you want to be able to collect data, then a paid option is going to work best for you. Really map out the journey here, just like you would with any other branch or extension of your marketing. The other cool piece about QR codes is that for dynamic codes, you can access analytics. My friend, Sarah Williams, who is the founder of a mompreneur networking group called Moms of Business, loves using Flowcode for this reason. Flowcode makes it easy to check your stats. You know, some things you can track include the number of scans, the time and the location of the scan and downloads. And with this info, you are able to customize your marketing, right? Like you can make data-informed decisions on what to do next. And especially for this out-of-home advertising, like you can track your ads to know which ones are the most effective for you. So get started, jump in, make it easy. Everybody should go and create a QR code for themselves. Keep it on your phone, in your notes app, or in your 
photo um, library and just have your contact info or have it linked to a social media platform. Let's start getting into it. And then start being aware and noticing where you see QR codes or where you could start implementing them for your business. Super cool technology that isn't going anywhere. All right, guys, let's all share where we're using our QR codes after you create them. I'm going to create a post on Instagram, hop on, let me know, or just DM me and tell me. And, you know, we can even do an update to this so that we can share our ideas and all of us can move forward together. All right, guys, have a great week. Talk to you soon. Thanks for joining me today. You can access more info in the show notes at thelonggamepodcast.net. If today's show connected with you in some way, please share it with your friends or hop on iTunes and leave me a review. Until next time, keep playing the long game.